So uh, true 3D displays have been uh, theorized and fantasized over the past uh, 50 years. The scientific community and every sci-fi fan knows that the ideal holographic display is really quite far away. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this has set the bar quite high for this kind of technology. Conventional stereo 3D is really just an illusion. It's a twin 2D, and it's not really good enough for the job. Um, a real 3D image needs to be presented in real space, in midair, so that when you look around it, you'll see it from different aspects, different angles. And if you don't do that, current technology will give you a headache or make you feel nauseous. Back in 2007, uh, I was working as a scientific officer at the European Commission. My background is in microelectronics. And I noticed that, um, that 3D was going to make another comeback in cinema and in television. But I wasn't happy with the way it was going, so I decided to do something about it. I started a couple of experiments in my basement. It was a homebrew project that kind of rapidly grew out of control. Um, <laughs> I got some random results, and then some good ones, and then some bad ones, and I realized that I needed help. So I went to the uh, Photonics Engineering Doctoral Center in Harriet Watt and, uh, and asked them for help. And I pitched my case like I'm doing now, and they went for it. And I formed my company, Holoxica, and I'm going to present to you now what I managed to achieve. So the engineering challenge has been to build a holographic 3D display that's practical and commercially fe feasible. So I decided to forget about the whole Star Wars thing and start from scratch. So I asked the fundamental question, what's the simplest display you can make? Well, a display, any display, like this one, is just a bunch of dots. So I started with a single dot in 3D space that I could just turn on and off, which is not particularly interesting. Then I moved on to two dots, and then four, and then nine in a geometric progression. So my first generation display was made in 2010. And this could show just very basic, simple alphanumerics, icons, symbols, that kind of thing. And it won a Scottish Technology Prize, and I filed a patent on it. Then... Uh, I hit a bit of a roadblock with this technology because it wasn't very scalable and I wanted to go to much higher resolutions. So after about two years, I made the second generation display, which has millions of dots in midair. We can show whatever image we want. Uh, I added interactivity to it so that you can touch virtual icons in space. You can draw in midair. Kids love it. Um, and it was also featured on the gadget show back in March, and hopefully got a clip here. So, uh, so you can see that here um, we've got uh, a display, we've written all these apps for it. Um, this is actually the final chapter of my doctoral thesis. It's been viewed by more than a million people, and thousands of people have tried it because they invited us to the live show event at the NEC in April. Um, my patent got granted. I'm now working on the second patent. And uh, it's won a number of awards, and uh, it's published. And uh, some of the prizes include an International Hologram Manufacturer Association Award, which I won two weeks ago. And last year, I won the International Photonics Society uh, uh, Scholarship award. So, so those are international industry awards that recognize the potential of this technology. I think this is probably uh, one of the most uh, entrepreneurial entities at the extreme end of the scale. And uh, I'd like to encourage um, more SME participation uh, within this program. And it goes back to the question I asked earlier. I think that uh, small companies um, place a lot of value on this kind of uh, program because they're more likely to put uh, 
a critical project onto such a program. Um, I dare say that bigger companies will not put a critical project, give a critical project to a student. Anyway, uh, SMEs uh, um, recognise that higher risks lead to higher returns. In terms of expenditure, if, if we total everything, probably spent about a million pounds um, when all said and done over the past five years on this kind of research. It's risky and, uh, and it's kind of expensive. But this needs to be put into context with other activities. Just in the last year alone, the US Department of Defense has put $83 million into two companies to do this kind of research. So the odds are stacked against us, but we just carry on and continue to innovate. So this is my roadmap. I've talked about the first two generations already. The third generation display, which is what I'm building now, following my NGD research, I managed to get a grant from the Technology Strategy Board, and I'm designing a display for uh, CT and MRI scanners, medical scanners. The benefits of this technology will be 40% faster interpretation of CT scans by radiologists, 15% faster surgery, and 20% more accurate surgery in terms of incisions, stitching, and things like that. I think after decades of research in this field, um, it's actually now ready to be exploited in biotechnology, in medical imaging, in scientific visualization, and engineering design. These are all billion dollar markets with high growth rates and a huge unmet demand to visualize, the need to visualize cr critical, complex, and costly data sets. So the last millennium was really about the discovery and mastery of the electron and electricity and electric fields. This is the center of the photon. Mastering light will lead us to a future that's bright. Thank you.